Hey guys, here we go into a video on timing and why timing was so important and why Caleb Plant was able to extend the shelf life of the fight, right? Because everyone kind of knew that eventually Caleb Plant was going to get knocked out. It was only going to be a matter of time that until he found a big pendulum punch, a big power punch to land on him. Uh, similar to the ones that if we watch here, right away in the third round, Canelo is just shooting a big feint at Billy Joe Saunders here and then bashing him with a hard right hand, right? Canelo doesn't have to worry about Saunders interacting with him at all. We can see him trying to control the line a little bit, but we can also see as soon as he gets into position to punch, Billy Joe Saunders is trying to block, he's trying to defend, he's worried about the punch rather than how to properly defend it or stop Canelo from jumping into his line, okay? We're going to move forward a little bit. And same round, just a few seconds later, here is Billy Joe Saunders with his jab. He shoots it, gets stuck on the front foot, which means it's not a very good jab. He doesn't get very much space. And then Canelo's right back onto jumping into him with a big pendulum punch. Massive left hook. He didn't set it up. He crossed the line a little bit and then just jumped into the left hook. And Billy Joe Saunders is not really looking to interact with him, right? One thing that I want you to pay attention to is how active... Caleb Plant's lead hand was in, Cal in Canelo's face. It was constantly stopping and asking Canelo questions, saying, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Stopping Canelo from just jumping, right? And jumping into these big, massive punches, right? Again, Billy Joe Saunders wasn't using his lead hand to probe. He wasn't constantly fainting. He wasn't constantly controlling the space between him and Canelo. And Canelo's a small guy. So if you give him all that space, he's such a great athlete, he's going to use it. And he's going to jump into his big power pendulum punches with all that mass. And he's going to land these big, big, huge punches. Now, in contrast, we have Caleb Plant, who was able to kind of time Canelo and stop Canelo from being able to do those kind of, you know, big, big, big punches against him. Right? As we see here in the third round, here he is. Not really controlling the space, but as Canelo jumps in, right, Caleb Plant knows where the line is. He's so used to interacting with it, he knows where Canelo's going to be. He's able to start timing him with this left hook because Canelo just jumps in. He doesn't always faint and probe and occupy his opponent's guards. He just kind of blasts forward. But the difference here being that Caleb Plant was not afraid to interact with Canelo as Canelo attempted to throw this punch. Now, Caleb Plant's getting hit in the back, but that's only because he changes positions during this punch, okay? And he does it perfectly and times Canelo as Canelo jumps into his big pendulum power punch. Now, <clears throat> Canelo tried this tactic many, many different ways and many, many different times. He tried jumping straight into a big left hook, very similar to what we saw him do against Billy Joe Saunders, and it was effective against Billy Joe Saunders because, again... Billy Joe Saunders wasn't constantly looking to control the line. He wasn't looking to faint and probe. He was looking to be slick. He was looking to be sneaky. He was looking to be, you know, more tricky than, than have control of the environment, okay? Right? Have the illusion of control by being able to be moving around and slip, except for the fact that once he got fainted just a little bit by Canelo, right? Just a little bit of a faint with the big jump, right? He shells up, he loses control of the line, and he doesn't know what to expect from Canelo. He doesn't know anymore because he didn't have control of the line. He can't see what's coming. He's still probably thinking that Canelo was going to throw a punch with the first punch. And then here, right? One punch, and then he's off the line. But where's the constant control that, that Caleb Plant had, right? That stops Canelo from being able to just do this whenever he wants. Look how open he is, right? Again, Caleb Plant was making him pay for being as open as this. Again, these big power pendulum punches are not free. Now, real quick, if you guys are interested in learning how to chain your weight transitions together and learn your boxing, your power pendulum stuff, uh, check out the boxing, the Black Belt Boxing Program. Okay, it's 30% off with promo code 30 right now. Check out the reviews um, and listen to the the... The testimonial in the beginning um, of, a, of a guy who's my patron now. He's, you know, doing quite well now. Massive, massive power increase. Um, and he's very, very happy. He's been a patron of mine 
after buying the, the package for months after he's been very very happy with uh, what we've been working on and his progress um, and uh, you know it's really cool a lot of stuff I wish I could share with you guys but it's his stuff so um, I don't really share too much but anyway um, uh, check it out it'll teach you how to do this but it's also going to teach you the mechanics and the body mechanics and the proper way to do it to get maximum power with I don't want to say minimum effort because we always work hard but without as much effort as you think it's going to be to get the power. It, it, teaching you proper body mechanics, the proper ways to drill these things, um, and to teach you to set them up too. It's a really, really, really excellent boxing program. Um, it also has a seminar that teaches you how to, to apply this stuff in a fight and also has a breakdown of teaching pendulum boxing in sparring from one of my patrons as I kind of teach that seminar. Um, uh, to my patrons, some of them that I've been teaching this program as I developed it, and then you know now you know it's anyway. Check it out. Uh, limited time promo code thirty for thirty percent off, um, and yeah, it's excellent stuff, you guys. Anyway, jumping into his power pendulum punches and getting a lot of extra value from his weight transitions because he's jumping into them, right? Because he's able to use the pendulum to add momentum to his punches, right? Now, Caleb Plant, again, was finding ways to time Canelo and stop that from being as effective for him, right? Catching him, which made Canelo have to slow down a bit, right? It made Canelo have to cross the line a bit slower. It made Canelo have to change his game plan um, as he would come forward on this pendulum. And here's another example. As he brings his weight to the front foot, Caleb Plant is going to time him with these jabs here, right? And control that space and stop Canelo from being able to jump forward, right? Now these little pendulums here, these allow Canelo to see how his opponent is going to react to him when he makes those pendulums, when he gets his opponent against the ropes, okay? We're going to take a look at how that kind of looks um, just real quick. Here, as he starts trying to cross the line, right? Caleb Plant's going to try to circle to his right. He tries to cross the line, and, and Canelo says, okay, I'm going to control him with the left hand, and I'm going to try and jump into a right hand. Woof! But Caleb Plant sees it coming, okay? So Canelo has a very, very difficult time cutting the ropes off when he gets there and using that little maneuver to set up his big right hand, okay? But he's used that maneuver to cut the ring off and put pressure on Caleb Plant so Caleb Plant has been able to get the timing and the rhythm of it as he interacts with it with his jab and stop it from being an effective source of offense for him. As we saw, Canelo had to be much more slow, much more plodding with his punches and his, and his fighting because, again, he's not a boxer. He's a puncher. He likes to get into position and land big, 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 powerful punches. But if you don't interact with him and you don't stop him from controlling the space with his his own active guard and exploding into his big punches, he's going to explode into them with big, jumping, stepping, pendulum power punches. And he's going to really rock you. And that's going to give him more power in his punches than he has on normal. It's going to make him a bigger puncher. It's going to make people think that he's a more powerful puncher than he actually is. Because he's getting all this extra momentum, as we got to see in this fight, there were a lot of times where Caleb Plant was, you know, kind of eating some big shots and stuff, right? Now, real quick again, Canelo trying to jump into that position and Caleb Plant controlling the space, right? Interacting with him and timing him as he gets his weight into that position and stopping Canelo from being effective. Now... Again, as Canelo was coming forward, Caleb Plant was controlling the space. And again, he didn't have to do that with just punches. Here, doing it with a little probing shot here, a little control of the lead hand, right? Pushing Canelo off his line, stopping Canelo from being able to just jump into his punches. Because he can see that Caleb Plant is ready to interact with him. So it causes him to, to fend the line slowly here, right? Stop this lead hand from hitting him. And try to get his weight across the line. As we can see him batting at that lead hand. Then slipping it. And then now jabbing. And watch him use his footwork. And start penduluming forward. Okay? Trying to close the distance. And set that big right hand up. Again, very, very similar motion. As he brings his weight to the front foot. And he has to try to jump in to that big punch. 
But he has to do it a lot slower here because Caleb Plant is punching him in the face as he does it. So he has to slowly jab as he brings that leg forward and then jab as he brings that other leg forward and then gets into position to finally cross Caleb Plant's line, but only far back here, right? He can't even get so far back this way that he can land a punch to the head. He did all that work to create enough space on Caleb Plant's line to land a punch to the body, okay? Again, simply by controlling the space here and slowing Canelo down and stopping him from just jumping into the punches, he's able to create enough space that he can stop Canelo from hitting head punches. Yeah, sure, you don't want to get hit by the body, hit in the body either, but controlling the space uh, and showing that That, uh, well, let's take a look at the next clip and I'll, and I'll say what I'm going to say just because I don't want to seem like a hater, right? But all these big punches here that we saw Caleb Plant eat, right, were proof that Canelo is not as big of a puncher as everyone thinks he is. He's not as good of a striker, right? We've seen a few times when he, when he trains in the We Fight How We Train videos, how I talked about how when he throws his left hook, he doesn't get his weight to the back foot, right? Here he is, landing a massive left hook on a standing target, but not really hurting him. Caleb Plant was just like, oh, I didn't like that, bro, right? Because Caleb Plant has controlled the space enough, he's interacted with, and he's stopped Can Canelo from penduluming on him enough that Canelo has to get into these positions standing. And this is where he has finds the, the time and space to let this punch go when he is when he is in front of, Canelo, uh, in front of Caleb Plant. Now... Caleb Plant, again, is a boxer, right? He's not really a puncher. He's not, you know, in the shoulder roll stuff. This stuff is not real boxing, right? It is, but I'll, I'll tell you guys about it later when I start breaking it down. Um, it's coming soon, but it's, it's only a fragment of boxing. It's only a small piece of it, and you still have to have all of your boxing to, to be successful, and Caleb Plant not able to fight off the front foot and not able to get out of this position safely, right? Or pendulum out off the back foot. Um, gave Canelo a lot of success here to land this strike over and over again. Now, again, Canelo, not really a great boxer conventionally, right? Caleb Plant showed, and now I want to say on average, Caleb Plant is on average a pretty good boxer. Able to fill the space between him and his opponent with jabs and uh, control uh, quite often and quite well. Um, but not a power puncher himself, not able to take advantage of all the control of the line that he had, right? A very small skill, right? But very important, a very, only one piece of the puzzle, right? And again, Caleb Plant here was able to show that, that a lot of the success that Canelo has had in his fights is because his opponents don't control the space between him and them. They, they're not looking to interact. They're looking to escape. They're looking to not get hit. Whereas Caleb Plant should be so proud of himself. He actually fought really, 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 really well. Um, and, you know, the few times that he did make mistakes, he paid for them. And he was all, okay, got to move on. Can't, can't let that one happen. But here, Caleb Plant was looking to interact with Canelo. And Canelo was on the back foot here. And he was going from the back foot, rolling to the front foot, into a big leaping left hook. And I want to point out, this punch is the one that hurt him, and it was a big leaping left hook. Again, a punch that he was had he had to jump and get his weight into. Again, it was inevitable. Eventually, Canelo was going to find an opportunity to land a big pendulum punch like this against Caleb Plant. Eventually, he was going to find it, right? Again, early in the rounds, early in the rounds, trying to land a very similar punch, he had a lot of trouble. Because Caleb Plant was still ready to interact with him, right? Caleb Plant's waiting for him. So when Canelo explodes out of his guard here and thinks, okay, he's going to be so scared of me taking this position. He's going to be so scared of me jumping forward that he's going to run away and I'm going to hit him with this punch. Or he's going to throw a jab and I'm going to slip. But Caleb Plant was like, nah, bro, I'm here. Ready to interact with him. Stopping him from feeling as comfortable to get some value out of those punches because he's... Caleb Plant is going to get better at landing these punches as the fight goes on as well. And that means that those punches are going to be more powerful for him. They're going to be more effective. And that means more danger. So while people are going to give Canelo a lot of, you know, a lot of shit for the way that he fought. A lot of shit for not jumping in and smashing into, 
into Caleb Plant uh, like the way that he did against Billy Joe Saunders, Plant gets the credit for that. Plant is the reason, okay? That's not going to be the case in Canelo's next fight. Canelo is not going to be fighting Caleb Plant in his next fight. He's not going to be fighting someone who has the experience controlling the space with the jab like that, setting it up, having, this, having the experience to do that and, and be able to interrupt his pendulum step as frequently and as effortlessly, right? Because Caleb Plant from this position knows that he can peel and he can get off the line anytime he wants. Canelo knows that too. So he knows how much time it's going to take for him to execute an attack. He's still figuring out, you know, what space, how much, how much of the distance do I have to, cl to close off? How much, of the, how much control of the line do I need before I can make an attack? <clears throat> While Caleb Plant, he has all this experience. He's a little bit taller, right? Again, very difficult spot for Canelo to be in fighting someone who's taller than him. But I want to say that Canelo did the right thing, slowing down the pace and not being as reckless because there was a point at the end of the fight where I, I live tweeted or whatever that is on um, YouTube. I left a, a message that Canelo, that, that Caleb was still fresh. He was still fresh and that, that meant that he was dangerous because he was still landing punches. And if Canelo was not slowing the fight down here, crossing the line with the control of the line that he was getting, right? Stopping these kinds of, these kinds of motions from being big punches. Stopping Caleb Plant, who's a pretty good boxer. Stopping him from jumping into his own punches. Stopping him from jumping into his own control, right? Because Canelo's jumping into his attacks, trying to hope to control the line with the jump and then land a strike. But Caleb Plant can just jump into his strike and time it perfectly. Gives him the advantage, again, because Canelo's the, sh the shorter fighter, the smaller fighter, but he's also the one coming forward, which also is inherently another disadvantage, okay? On paper, right? Obviously. Obviously, the better fighter you are, the less of a disadvantage. But here's the thing. I want to I wanna point this out, okay? Because unequivocally, everyone knows that Canelo is a much better... No, no, no. That Canelo is a little bit better of a fighter than, than Caleb Plant, right? We know this because we saw the fight. But we also saw a lot of vulnerability. We also saw a lot of, we also saw a lot of, we saw a lot of things. But here's the thing that we know completely unequivocally that Canelo is indefinitely a better fighter than Caleb Plant. Okay, now let's think about it like this. Just let's reorganize our thoughts on this just a little bit because again, there were a lot of vulnerabilities, a lot of things that we saw a taller fighter would be able to to take advantage of against a shorter fighter because of these advantages. And you have to remember that the advantages were there. But if Canelo was the same size as Plant, if Canelo was the same height as Plant, this fight would not have gone two rounds. It might not have gone one. This would have been one of the most savage beatings ever. Um, and that's, you know, how much difference in technique is required to fight someone who's bigger than you. Because your angles are smaller, your opportunities are smaller. So you have to be faster, you have to hit harder. Not only do you have to take more advantage of every opportunity you get, but you get less opportunities. Because when your opponents make mistakes, the margins at which they make the mistakes are smaller, right? Think Pacquiao versus Ugas. If Pacquiao was the same size as Ugas, he would have beat the shit out of him. Like, forget my life. He would have beat the dog crap out of him. It would have not even been close. Not even close to close. But he's so much smaller. There's so much space to overcome. And you have to overcome that space with technique. You have to overcome that space with, with not just IQ, right? But with technique and athleticism. Okay? Because your opponent has the other advantages for free. So the ones that you get, you have to get by working hard. So even though Canelo looked pretty, you know, I want to say vulnerable. And there were spots and we saw, we all saw, it's okay. He was fighting a guy who's so much bigger than him in, in theory, right? Obviously we know their weight, but this is a very important idea, okay? So even though Canelo was not that great of a boxer, right? 
um, traditional boxing, getting on and off the line, controlling the line, right? He's not always that great at interacting with his opponent. We saw. It took him a lot of time. He did a great job, and eventually, because boxing is a 12-round sport, you play this for 12 rounds, right? You are going to find an opportunity to set up your biggest punches. And Caleb Plant found himself for too long in too many of a predictable position, and Canelo was able to figure out that when he was in these positions, when he was close range, he would land the punch, that he could also jump and pendulum into them from long range too. And set them up. Again, we all knew it was inevitable. We all knew eventually. The question was, what was Caleb Plant going to do with all the space he had in between? In between the time it's going to take Canelo to figure out his space and his rhythm. And to figure out what punches are going to be effective at Caleb Plant's positions. Right? How long is it going to take for Caleb Plant to slow down? How long is it going to... How long... Can he absorb the punishment that Caleb Plant's going to give him on the outside, right? Can he mitigate it by slipping and rolling with the punches? And as we saw when he would come in and get hit by, you know, not doing that as much, right? Because again, if Canelo... I want to talk about... This is really important too because if Canelo didn't have that strategy of shortening up the line and controlling it and, and walking him down and finding those positions... He would have wound up like Tyson Fury. Flat on his face in the fourth round, right? That's all that Tyson Fury looks to do, is jump into his big pendulum punches. He didn't really box Deontay Wilder. He would jump into a punch, land a punch, and then he would put Deontay Wilder in a headlock, and then he would try to land some more punches while he was holding him, right? Just blatantly cheating, right? Like, again, because of the fact that Deontay Wilder, again, was controlling the line pretty decently with his lead hand. Right? Not that great, right? But enough to offset some of Tyson Fury's rhythm, right? Surprise! One, two, right? Caught him in the middle of his pendulum step and dropped him, right? Again, I was not very impressed with Tyson Fury's uh, performance. I don't think he made any adjustments. I think that the way that... The way that Tyson Fury wore Deontay Wilder down was not within the rules and the confines of boxing. I don't think that it was fair. Uh, I don't think that you're allowed to just try to put your opponent in a headlock all the time. Ever, in fact. Unless you're expecting to be broke. Right? And it's just because you don't want to get hit in the head, right? By someone coming up with their head. Which is not Deontay Wilder's MO. He's not even looking to do that. It's never a danger. So that makes it the referee's job to make sure that Tyson Fury doesn't do that. He keeps his hands to himself. But also that he doesn't cheat... And punch him while he's holding him. Now, getting back to, again, the difference between Canelo and Tyson Fury, right? And I want to be... I'm always very critical of Canelo, okay? But he needs to get credit for this. Tyson Fury outweighed Deontay Wilder by how much? And he was still getting dropped on his way in against a much smaller guy. But what Canelo did was the exact opposite. He went against a much bigger guy. And was moving forward and penduluming on him and slowing the pace down enough so that he could figure out a rhythm that he could interact with all of his opponent's opportunities to stop him from getting into this position, right? Because this is the position that he wants to throw his left hook from, right? But he didn't know how to get here early in the fight without getting hit with this punch, right? See how this situation here is very similar right to this one he's on the front foot he's trying to transfer his weight his next move is going to be a left hook and it's very similar but he gave it away by jumping into it right and can Caleb Plant was busy waiting he was waiting for this move but now in contrast Canelo's done a great job of forcing Caleb Plant to use his technique and use his boxing skills to interact with him on the outside because he was landing at striking distance, right? As we saw, every time he gets within striking distance, he was landing that left hook. So Caleb Plant has to control the space and stop him from getting within striking distance. And it gives away his space, gets him to interact, and then he's not ready to interact with him when he gets here. 
Canelo was able to roll under this position, under that control, and find his way into Caleb Plant's line before Caleb Plant was able to interact with him or change positions with him. So I want to say that it was it was great work from Canelo. Um, I'm pretty critical of him in Patreon. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that we talk about, but I wanted to talk about this one particular aspect of the fight. Um, and the full, fight, the full fight film study is on Patreon if you guys want to check it out. It's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. Um, it's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, okay? Like 700 videos. Um, there are hundreds of videos of me teaching my earliest set of patrons um, all of their technique, teaching them how to transition their weight, change positions, cross the line, teaching them how to hit the heavy bag, teaching them how to hit the, hit the double end bag, teaching how, them how to spar, teaching them drills, teaching them everything that you want to learn about getting into boxing from the ground up, okay? All the way up until you start chaining your weight transitions together and boxing gets a little bit more specific and detailed and... Uh, then I have Vimeo packages to teach you guys the rest. But for 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month, you get access to s nearly 700 film studies. Now, I don't know how many it is. I think it's like, f I think it is around 700 videos. But there are so many videos. There are always more videos every day, almost every day. So that's nearly 30 videos a month. No, it's probably like, probably actually about like 15 to 20 videos. Um, you'll never be able to keep up with how much I post, okay? You'll never keep up. There's so much content. Um, so you'll you'll get to see, and people request and all that stuff, but it's 10 bucks to sign up, 10 bucks a month. And it was started in 2018, I think. So there's three years of film studies and teaching um, technique and teaching um, sparring and teaching positions and teaching, you know, teaching boxing. So almost anything that you want to learn. In fact, uh, most of almost everything that Coach Anthony posts on his channel is something stolen from my Patreon. Um, so if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's all in there. Uh, same thing with Tommy and Kello. And yeah, just lots of stuff in there. Um, <laughs> and I'm not being a dick. It's true. Okay. But for 10 bucks, you guys can have access, unlimited access to the same library as Coach Anthony. The same library as Tommy and Kello. Okay. The same library as all these people that want to, you know, teach my boxing, right? And teach my theories. Now, um, also, for a limited time, again, my my uh, Vimeo packages, 30% off with promo code 30. Uh, but also, if you join my Patreon and you guys want personalized boxing coaching, you guys want private coaching, similar to this, right? Breaking down your fights, your training, your this, your that, to make you the fighter that you want to be. Um, it's 50 bucks to sign up, 50 bucks a month. But if you sign up, I'll also give you a promo code to my double in bag mastery. Um, it's a really, really, really cool set of drills and ways to get better uh, to teach you to do all the stuff that Canelo is doing here, right? Penduluming and stepping onto his punches. Um, it's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, it's more in line with uh, like Kovalev and Usyk. Um, but you'll also learn to bleed your power punches like Canelo does onto these punches as well. So, um, but check it out. It's really, really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was it on this, on this timing. And, um, there are holes in Canelo's game. There are holes. Okay. Manny Pacquiao likes to cross the line with punches. Okay. Canelo likes to cross the line with blocks and control, right? He likes to catch the... Catch the jab with his rear hand and block up top and then slip into position, right? Manny Pacquiao likes to throw punches. But Canelo's going to have to start learning to control the space and cross the line in different ways. Otherwise, he's going to keep fighting these bigger and taller guys. And as we saw, there were some times I think Plant actually hurt or stunned Canelo. I definitely think he hit him harder than he was expecting to get hit. But Caleb Plant doesn't really get his weight into his punches um, and that's actually going to be the lead into us and our training. Um, we're going to be doing a We Fight How We Train, uh, improving our combat sequences video for Caleb Plant and getting power into his right hand. Um, as we saw, he was really, really good in the fight at controlling the space with his left hand, right? But he wasn't really able to interact with his opponent with his right hand at all. So we're going to be working on that. We're going to be working on his position one and some really simple and easy Fouts Boxing drills. 
um, to kind of teach how to get power into your punches, okay? Um, yeah, anyway, if you're interested, um, the I think that one, I'm going to put that one on YouTube. It's a pretty cool uh, video. Um, I haven't done it yet, but, um, you know, I'm going to probably do it right after this video. And then, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll probably post it tomorrow. But um, anyway, um, if you guys got any questions or whatever, whatever, let me know. And yeah, thanks, guys.